So today we're going to go over how to use Kafka in our Deephaven um, Docker and IDE. And so the goal with this is that you will be able to use Kafka inside Deephaven. So when people come to you with problems, you can kind of understand what they're going on. Now you guys can see my screen okay? Yes, we can. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so if you haven't watched them, they were a little bit ago. Uh, Charles Wright, he did two Kafka presentations for us, and they are on YouTube. And then there's some slides in our uh, shared directory. And if you want to learn more, there's a, a free O'Reilly book that we've probably downloaded and whatnot. And one of my favorite ones is this Kafka book for kids. It's incredibly cute. It's about why some otters um, started needing to use Kafka. And so if you're a visual learner and just want to see kind of the kids book for Kafka, I highly recommend that you check that one out. So one of the reasons why we have Kafka inside Deephaven is because people are using it a lot. Um, in the Fortune 500, more than 60% are using it. And in the Fortune 100, 80% are using it. And so if you were to pull 10 of the largest insurance companies, all 10 of them are using it. And so you can see a lot of companies are using it. So by us having Kafka come in and out, we can be part of that data pipeline. And so kind of what I envision for this is we have Kafka, and then we take that data into Deephaven, and then we spit it back out into Kafka. And so one of the things that I know JJ's presented on in the past was his fraud detection for credit cards. So you can imagine Square, which already probably has fraud detection, of course. They have a Kafka stream. So we have a better credit card fraud detection perhaps. So they wanna put it into our platform and then they pipe it back into a Kafka stream in their square, kind of working seamlessly. Um, so that would be kind of a data pipeline that we could use for almost all of the companies if we wanted to get into it. And it's really, really easy to put Kafka inside Deephaven. Uh, one of the platforms that we integrate with is called Red Panda. You guys have probably heard of it. It's a really nice one because it's very adaptable and it's also really easy. All you have to do is insert these commands inside your Docker Compose file and you are up and running with Kafka. Um, some things to note is that uh, brokers are also called nodes, are also called servers. And so all of my examples are just with one server, but you can have a whole bunch of them. And if you have more than one node broker server, then you have to increment the ports. And almost always people use 9092. Um, I use a few different ones so I could have more than one server up at a time though. Okay. So to consume data in Kafka, we have the consume to table, which is pretty easy. And this definition is just from our reference documentation. Um, you have to supply essentially what port you're looking on, which is the Kafka properties. Now, each Kafka port can have a whole bunch of topics and partitions and then offsets, which are kind of like rows. And so you need to specify the topic and all the other details. And then how you want the key to be read, the, how you want the value to be read, and then whether you want it to be a streaming data source or an appending data source. And the great thing about our Kafka is to produce a Kafka stream from a table, it's almost exactly identical, except for we have to start with the data and then we send it to the stream. So that's kind of the overall how it looks and whatnot, and it should look pretty familiar to you guys. And inside each of those parameters, there is a lot of detail, of course. Um, and this is just from our documentation. And you can see that most of the properties apply to both the consume and the produce for Kafka. And so the Kafka properties are the essentially the servers you're listening to. There's the topic, which is essentially um, what's the title of the stream you're subscribed to. We have the Deephaven table, which you only use for produce when you're writing it. But on the other end, when you're reading it, you have to read it to a table. Uh, partitions and offsets only apply to consume because when you're writing it, that's kind of defined in the code all on the back end, so you don't have to worry about it. And then all of the key and values are symmetric and they apply to both consumer and producer. The table type only applies to consumer 
And then a really cool feature that they added into the producer is this last by key columns, which we'll get to in a little bit. But that's essentially, it does a last by on the keys. So you are writing only one value to the Kafka stream, even if you have multiple values coming to your table within that cycle. Okay, any questions so far? Awesome. So we're gonna get into some examples. So in this example, um, we're gonna make a table and then we're going to write it to a Kafka stream and then we're going to read it back into a deep haven table which is kind of an optional thing just to kind of see what goes along um, and we'll see kind of how the data comes. So I have here the normal IDE and all I did was add that red panda section to my Docker compose and that's the only change with it. And then here's my two Python scripts. Is that font big enough? Uh, maybe you could zoom in like two clicks. Okay, better? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so first, of course, we want to make our timetable. So here is just us making the timetable. And I have it so that every, you know, point 10 second, point 10 times a second it updates. And so we start to get a lot of data streaming into the table. And all I have is the row element. So from here, I want to write my Kafka stream. And you can see that we don't get too much feedback from that. We don't get errors because it was successful. We don't see the Kafka stream, nothing like that. But if I were to go into like a KSQL or something like that, then it would be there. Now, because we don't want to actually go into a KSQL, we want to see what that looks like. Now, when I wrote this, all I wrote it as was a simple column. And I didn't specify any type or anything like that. And the first argument is our key. And the second one is our value. Because I only have one column, I have that be our key and my value is empty. So now I wanna see what that table looks like. So I'm going to import the consumes and then I'm gonna read that table in. Now with this one, I'm not specifying too many details. I say I'm gonna use my red panda. Notice how the time topics match. So it's the same topic. And I want to append to the table. And I didn't specify how I want my data read. So there's a few problems with that. And notice how here's my data. And when it reads it in, it read it in as a string. So if I were to look up the, the key code for a capital G, it would be something to do with 839, just because it's reading in that X value, which is the row number. So this is not ideal, of course. So we want to be able to start to use our data and actually trust our data. So it's a good practice to start to import your data as different types. Um, and luckily, JJ helped write this. It's the Deephaven Types module, and it works really well with Kafka. So we have the Red Panda server. We have the same exact topic. And now we're going to format that data so that it reads it in as an int. So this is the key. And when we do that, you can see that now it's reading it in beautifully. So I always recommend formatting the data. Otherwise, you get a string value or something that's inferred, and that might not match. So that's just reading in a normal data, writing it out. So now let's, let's add one little thing. Here we have another timetable. But I'm going to add to it our key is going to be a random integer between 1 and 5. And then I still have the row number. And I'm going to call this one source grouped. So we're going to run it, do a little cleanup. And here you can see it's spinning out some x value between 1 and 5, and then some y value. And I have it doing a lot of them just so you can see that there's no data limitations. Now, again, we're going to write this to a Kafka stream. This time, what we're writing to a Kafka stream is called time topic group. And so that's the name of our stream. Now, I didn't do pep8 all the way, which I should have, but that's how it goes. And in this time, I have the key is going to be my x value that I wrote as a JSON. And then I'm supplying the value is my x and y. 
The new thing here is this true. What this true means is it's going to update my Kafka stream so that last by is run every X. And so that means if five gets a whole bunch of data points in that one cycle, only the last one is written. So let's see what that looks like. I wrote it there. And so now I'm gonna read it. So this is taking the Kafka stream back into Deephaven. And you can see in each cycle, it's not generating quite as much data. Here's the Y value, which is the offset or the row value. And it's jumping around a bit, meaning not all the data is there. It's only cycling that last actual value. Now, of course, it's really good to use data types. But another thing that's useful is to actually be able to change the column names. Um, here we have the original column names X and Y. And we can use that in this table. But if you ever want to change your column names, then you're going to have to use some mapping in the JSON. And to do that, we just have another argument inside our JSON that maps it out. So here is the key and the value, which is exactly identical, but now it's renamed. OK, super simple, right? We take Deephaven to Kafka, take Kafka to Deephaven. Either way, it works back and forth, really nice. Some intricacies in the detail. So that's the first example. The next example, any questions on the first one? OK. So the next example, which I think is a little bit um, kind of just how you use with it, is some people like to interact with the Kafka stream via a terminal. And so Red Panda works really well with that. And to do that, we just write data to the terminal. It's pretty easy. And of course, inside our Docker, Docker Compose. Um, the key with this is you want to make sure that the topics match. And so I'll show you what that looks like if I get to the right string. So now we're going to read the terminal. Do a little cleanup. OK. So here is my commands to consume a data stream. So I run it, and you can see that I have this Kafka stream with absolutely nothing in it at all. So I'm going to change that, though. Here is my terminal. And I'm going to, oh, that's the wrong one. I'm going to put it into the topic test topic. There it is. So now I can send whatever message I want, a message. And notice how it pops up in my Deephaven table. I can send another message. And it will pop up. So that's pretty fine and dandy. But like I said, the power with us is that we can actually process the data. And so for example, here is a modified table where I just take the results. And I want them to start with the letter A. So. That is going to be my new table in Deephaven. We have one message. Starts with the letter A, nothing big. Notice it's just half of that. Now, the thing that I would want to do is I would want this message to update. Um, and so if I go back to my Deephaven table, we can see that, or go back to the terminal, we can see that if I write something, then it doesn't populate here, it populates here. Now, will it work and filter on the other one? Ta-da, it still works. And so that means since the stream, it's constantly pulling that data back and forth uh, continuously. And so we can take that modified table and just like before, we can send it back to a Kafka stream this one I call write topic two. And then this is without Deephaven, this is now on the Kafka server. We can take that and we can read that stream. Now notice none of our messages are there because I didn't specify to read since the first offset. And so this one is from the terminal. We take our Deephaven table and modify it here. We send that to Kafka. And then this is our check stream. And we want to see how that's interfacing. So I'm going to go back to my original topic. 
and put something like something else and see what happens. It went to my deep haven table. It filtered it in the modify table. And now it appears in my check stream table. I didn't format that, but that looks pretty good. So here you can see that if you subscribe to a message, then it goes all of its downstream parts, which is one of the reasons why the, the children's book is so nice, because you can see the downstream is impacted by it. So one of the examples that I wrote for this one that I, that I like is um, here is, well, I'll go to my terminal. So here is a Python script. Um, it's called Kafka Produce. And you know we use Confluent Kafka. And all this is doing is taking a little bit of how Confluent works with Kafka and then wrapping it around some normal functionality. So the general process for writing Python code for Kafka to produce is you want to import the package. You define your topic name. You have a producer to tell you what port it's looking on. And then you just send that data to the topic. So it's a pretty easy process. And so that's what this code does. And I added it to the app D directory. And so as we've been talking and whatnot, you can see that it's been watching essentially all of my Docker stats. And so this is all the containers I'm running and their memory usage. And here is a graph of that memory usage. Whew, my API has gone really high. Um, and then, of course, just like before, you could do pretty cool things um, with it. So here's just the latest ones. So that's one example. Now, any questions? OK, good. So another example that we could get into is, and this is where I think it's going to get really kind of powerful, is some people will write entire brokers in Kafka. And rather than having to, to share the code or the setup or any of that stuff, you can pass the fully made container in. And you can load that into your Docker image. And this is the one that, uh, that Paul Chambre wrote. And so here is another shell. Uh, this one is exactly equivalent to the Deephaven IDE Docker Compose, nothing extra in it, um, except for I have uh, two functions defined in the app D, one for quotes and one for trades. And so what this does is it takes Paul's code and it imports it in as a deep haven table. And the cool thing is, just like before, we can take his data that is written in Kafka and produces in Kafka, and we could stream it in, and we can, you know, do cool things with it. Uh-oh, that one didn't work. There it goes. Um, and we could do cool things with it. So you can see that there's volume weighted averages, there's graphs, and all that other neat stuff. OK. So as I was looking through Kafka, and I realized that um, I'm one of the only DevRels that's been doing Kafka for the last little bit, there's a whole bunch of use cases for it. Um, one of them is uh, FIFA, which I think is a sports thing. We'll say it's a sports thing. Uh, one that I really liked was this space debris one. And so what they did is they wrote a Kafka stream that essentially pulls the hit boxes for all the space debris. And then you could read in that space debris as a stream. And they visualized it because that's what they do. But of course, we would do something even cooler with it, like you know, decay trajectories or something. Uh, there's two data sources in Confluent that have talked about this. Uh, one of them is about using Kafka streams for astronomy. And another one is using it to track COVID and whatnot. And then we've talked about using it to log analytics with kind of a Splunk-like thing with you know, kind of what I do with the Docker stats, but a little bit more. But then there's this whole other use case that people are, are really craving. If you go into the Reddit forums for Kafka and things like that, um, Kafka is a very 
back in type of thing. And there's not too many good how to monitor Kafka's. And so it might be kind of a nice, nice thing for us to figure out a way for us to use and leverage our big data so that we can, you know, start to look at the serialization of topics and things like that. There are two out there, but neither of them are really as good as I think they should be. Okay. And the rest of the time I have for questions. If anyone is still there. See, told you it would be short. Pretty cool. Uh, Amanda, this is Jim Fung. So mm -hmm. are you, have you tried uh, some other Kafka compatible streaming platforms uh, you know, other than Red Panda? Uh, yes. And so I like Red Panda because um, you don't have to use Zookeeper and whatnot. Uh, but where, there was a project that I did that used the traditional Kafka with Deephaven where I actually used Postgres SQL and linked it to a KSQL and then linked that to Deephaven. So it, it works fully functional that way as well, but then it's a little bit more to add to your Docker Compose and a little bit more backend stuff. Cool. Any other questions? We don't have the, the expert in Kafka. Christian is kind of the, the go-to expert because he's the one that wrote this with Ryan. Yeah, so you may not be the quote unquote expert in Kafka, but you sure have, and probably had even when you started this project, more experience than me. How would, uh, I guess, are there any other tips or tricks for someone like myself with basically no Kafka experience at all for you know, better understanding? I mean, the, the examples are simple. They made sense. It seems really easy, is there? Are there um, any it, tips and tricks you have? It It is really easy. Um, I would say the, the hardest thing is to figure out your formatting of your data. And you know, Deephaven types is really useful for that. Uh, but the JSONs work best as strings. And if you don't have the exact column name matching, then the data won't read. So if you think that you have X, you know, uppercase, but it's actually X lowercase, then you won't actually get any data in. Hmm. So one of the things that I like to do first is do a simple string to read in the data. So I can see kind of the JSON format. You saw it in the, the one that went from stream to deep haven, where it was in quotes, and it told you essentially the dictionary for that Kafka topic. Because then you could take that dictionary mapping to get you the JSON titles that you need. Okay. Yeah, I was uh, <clears throat> actually watched a video the other day about. I can't remember what exactly the topic. It was. It was about specifically setting up a Kafka stream with some platform, and I don't remember what it was. But they set up the JSON uh, data using dictionaries of dictionaries in Python, and it was kind of cool. So I may try that as well. Yeah, and when you start to get inside that, then going to like an Avro type of schema is really useful. Uh, we currently don't have Avro for publishing, so that's why I didn't get into it at all. Uh, but that you get more fine-tuned details with Avro than you do with the JSON, because with JSON, like you said, a dictionary is inside dictionaries, and the nesting could get really kind of complicated. Cool. Okay, so I recommend that if you are new to Kafka, you check out the Gently Down the Stream book because it is incredibly cute and enlightening. 